Let's go, let's go. So tonight's live, we're talking about adding a service to a product-based business. Really just to ramp things up. And I wanted to bring this one in as I was thinking about the theme overall for this month. And I was thinking about who we have inside of our community. And I know that there are some of you that have product-based businesses. There are a lot of you that have product-based businesses or are thinking about product-based businesses as your path out and your path forward. And so I thought it very important to just take a little bit of time to talk about bringing in a service-based business and kind of what that may look like, feel, and why you might think about adding that on top of your product-based business, especially when you're talking about wanting to accelerate your exit out of corporate America, right? That's there are some important things hiding in there. So before I jump in, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Candace Spears, life and business coach, serial entrepreneur, host in this community, real estate investor. I am about all things ownership, owning your time, your talent, your identity, and bringing your brilliance into this world like no other. So I'm super excited for those of you that are here on live tonight. And so buckle up your seatbelt. For those of you that are new or it's your first live, I'm usually only on for about 20 minutes and I'm here every Thursday. And every month I'm usually asking, what is it you wanna hear about? What is it you wanna learn about on your journey? Cause I am here in service to you and help you to move forward. So let's talk about the pros and the cons when it comes to uh, product-based business. So one of the pros of course, is that you can infinitely scale up a product based business infinitely, right? You can, whether you do a thousand orders or you do a million, if you have the right system in place, you can scale it up nicely. And this is what it is. That's the nature of having a product based business. Now, the one con to a product based business, especially when you're first starting it is what it takes to get started. And so those of you that are running a product-based business, one of the cons that was getting started, it's one thing if you're making things, right? I don't know, you're making soap or you're making a t-shirt or something like that, where you can maybe quickly pull things together. That's one thing. But it's another thing if, let's say you have to source inventory from somewhere and organize suppliers and, and all this good stuff. And even holding inventory itself can have a cost that's associated to it. So that's one side of it. Now, when you get into the other piece of it, when you talk about a product-based business, and I imagine that this is the case for probably most of you that have a product-based business, the price points are probably a little bit lower. So maybe under $50, maybe $100 or less or something like that. If you're doing the type of business like Shopify stores or something like that, where you're drop shipping, you may have things that are at higher price points, but typically they're a little lower. And so now here becomes the, the conundrum, I guess you can say. When you're first starting out, if you don't necessarily have the capital to get enough reach, to get enough people to turn into customers, you end up with a lot of onesie twosie. So let's just take an average price point of $50. I have the $50 customer here, $50 customer here. Okay, let me see who else I know and who else I can talk to. The people who grow product-based businesses the fastest tend to be those who leverage advertising. And they leverage advertising because they can grow their reach. They can get their product in front of more people. And what does advertising cost? Money. All right, so I'll look out for that. Now, as we keep going, so let's say you've got this product-based business. Though so you've got it, you love it, it's your heart. Maybe even it's, it's doing well. Okay, I see some folks, you're with me. Okay, great. So let's say you've got this product-based business going. One of the things that you can think about, again, I'm always coming to you from the interest of accelerating your exit. And one of the big things that you need, I don't have to tell you because you're probably thinking about it. One of the big things that you need is a financial foundation, or at least to feel like you're going to have a financial foundation. Those are important as you talk about accelerating and moving forward. Just thinking about that. So with your product-based business, one of the things that you can do is begin to say, okay, what if I added in a service? What would that look like? 
what would that be? And I'm not going to talk about pricing because pricing does take a role in it. I think in next week's live, I'm talking about premium pricing because that's an important factor here. Um, but I won't get into it today. So I'm going to stick on the service side of things. All right. So you can think about adding in a service to this product-based business. Now, before I keep going and we start jumping into some brainstorming and maybe thinking about some examples, those of you that do have a product-based business, do you have a service that goes along with it? So who had my product-based businesses? Kimberly, who else? Ashley, Candace, or no, maybe not Candace. Yes, you, Candace. <laughs> So if you have a product-based business, do you currently have a service that goes alongside of it? So just yes or no, drop that in the chat. Also drop for me in the chat, just what is it that you sell? What's the product? So just give me an idea of what the product is and we'll leverage that for some example also. All right. So let's take a look at this, right? Let's think about some examples. And so I sat back and I could easily make up some stuff, which we'll have fun with here in a second. But I just kind of thought about some real world examples. And the first one that came to my mind, fitness stuff always pops into my mind, but the first one that came to my mind is Peloton. So Peloton, they have a product. And actually what's interesting about Peloton is I believe that they had their service first. I believe they had their service first, actually, and then came out with the product. But right now, they're very much known with, for their bike that they have with the screen and all this other stuff. And so they've got this product, which happens to be a premium priced product, but they have this service that accompanies it. And so when you think about leveraging a service with a product, here's some things you might want to think about. So for whatever your product is, and again, if you guys want to play around with, okay, I have a product, what might a service be? Drop what your product is into the chat and we'll play with that. So here's what you can think about. <clears throat> so I've got this product. Now, question one you can ask yourself is, why do people buy this product? What's the problem that it solves? You remember, I always skew towards solving problems more than I skew towards fulfilling desires and just say, hey, I just want to have this thing because it's nice or I love it. I just naturally skew towards solving problems and solving big and meaty problems. So ask yourself, what problem is my product solving? What, what problem is it solving? So once you've got that and you've got that in your mind, then ask yourself, all right, so if it's solving that problem, you could say, what other problems does my target client encounter when they're using my product? That's one question. You could also think about what's happening with my target client before they get to purchasing my product. You could think about what does my target client have to deal with after they purchase my product? So in any of those three questions, what you're likely to find is that there's something that they're going through, right? So there's something else on their journey besides the product that you can help them with. Now, I'm, I'm going to go back to Peloton for a second, then I'm going to jump over into the chat. So I see Ashley and, and Angel have things there. So let's go back to the peloton example for a second so they have this bike and they could very well sell an exercise bike people sell exercise bikes all the time buy it people can buy it they can use it great however they've got this service that helps people actually put that bike into action you can use the bike without the service right you probably wouldn't do that but you can use the bike without the service but even still they know that hey one, if they have such a variety in the different types of exercises they can do, well, that's going to keep them excited and motivated and doing their workout goals. If they can be in community with other people while they're working out, that's probably going to help their accountability. And do you think accountability is on the list and being motivated to work out is on the list, right? When you purchase a product like that? Absolutely. 
So again, you're just looking, you're looking across and saying, yeah, I got this product. What else is going, what else is going wrong when they're encountering it? Or what else are they dealing with before they get to it? Or what else are they dealing with after? Okay, so let's jump into the chat. So Ashley's t-shirt store, and Ashley, just drop in the chat. I know we were chatting earlier. Drop in the chat, what, what types of t-shirts are you selling exactly? So Angel, I want to create a subscription service-based business, a virtual sip and chill, I don't know why I saw slip, a virtual sip and chill event with women like the sip and paint. Okay, so Angel, think about this. So this sip and paint, and you're on the desire side of things, but I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with this. So this sip and paint, it sounds like it's a it's a way for women to get together and be in camaraderie with each other, just to chill out, enjoy each other's company, leave their cares behind, let's say. Right? Yeah, maybe, probably. Okay, so if you think about that. And if you think on a, a bigger scale, when I say bigger scale, as women, we like to get away. We like to get with girlfriends. We like to de-stress and it's a form of de-stressing. Okay. And so when you think about that, how often do we need to do that? What if, and maybe this is actually the path that you were thinking. What if there was a way to plan your, your de-stress events for the year or six months so that you always stay in balance, you always stay calm, you always stay. And yeah, the virtual sip and chill is one and maybe there's some other type of event, of event as well, but you offer them that way to constantly stay in balance. One of the ways being right, a sip and chill event or, or something like that. That's just an example of what I mean by zooming out a little bit to say, Okay, yeah, what they're actually trying to do is just find a way to relax and be together and get away from the, the humdrum. And that's something that we have to do fairly often. So what does that look like? So I love that, by the way, Angel. Okay, so Ashley, I have a lot of empowerment shirts, black history, boss quotes. I have Kamala Harris designs, that type of thing. Okay. Okay, and Angel, you're in. Okay, so Ashley, on your front, so you're dealing with empowerment, black history, that type of thing. Again, you're on the, similar to Angel, you guys are on the desire side. Angel, you, you can break into that, you can break into that problem, you've got a problem. Ashley, for yours, so something that you might like to think about is you can almost take the lens of how very often there is a drive to support black businesses. And your clientele may be along the lines, right? If I'm buying black empowerment shirts, I'm buying like, okay, this is, I'm so proud of who I am. It's this, it's that. These might also be folks who want to take advantage of some service that connects them with other black owned businesses. So they constantly feel like they are supporting other folks. Maybe uh, to help them look across their life from the groceries that you buy, from the electronics that you consume, from the products that you buy. Let us help you look and ensure that all of your everything is done by a black owned business. Here is just, again, it's looking out to say, all right, well, what's going on with my clientele? And why is it that they might be so hot on black empowerment? Of course, being black, just proud in general, but there likely is something else, though, with your clientele that is likely to invest heavily in Black history, Black empowerment, those type of products and items to wear might also be the same type of folks that are eager to take advantage of a service that helps me make sure I'm supporting my Black community in the fullest way by taking a look at what percentage of my life is me supporting other black owned businesses? So that's an idea of a, a service type component that you could think about with that type of thing. So is that making sense to you all when I talk about just stepping away, but looking a little closer at kind of the continuum of your clientele, of the product that you're offering, why they're buying it, what else is going on, what else might they be likely to do, that type of thing. If it makes sense, drop a make sense in the chat. Just so we know you're with me. And while you guys are doing that, so again, and I see them and I'm at 
I am at time, overtime here. If you all are coming in and you're watching on the replay, be sure to hashtag replay. Again, I know there are a lot of you in this community that have product-based businesses. And I know that a lot of you have product-based businesses because you also think it's an easier way forward. We'll get into that in another live. Makes sense to Colleen, I see you. Chris, I see you. Makes sense, makes sense. Good. All right, so here's my homework pretty much just for those of you, and I'm just gonna check Ashley's comment here. It's like design for another black owned business, design for another black owned business and donate a portion of my profit to the business. That's not what I mean. So I just wanna correct this and correct this for everybody. So to Ashley's comment, so she said design for another black owned business and donate a portion of my profit to their business. No, nope, I'm trying to give a good example of something like this that may exist in real life. It's more like a, a consultative thing, Ashley. So people who want to ensure that a good portion of how they live their life is being done through a black owned business. So if I had the opportunity to purchase my grocery from a black owned business, but I'm missing out on that opportunity, that's something that I need to get to and get me connected. Look at my entire life and see what percent of it am I actually moving towards black owned businesses as opposed to just anybody. So it's a consultative thing for people who want to ensure that they are supporting at the highest level black owned businesses, black empowerment, that type of thing. The same type of people that are likely to be buying the t-shirts. That's one. Ashley, you're in the accelerator, so you've got a great opportunity to ask more questions. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I do have to jump off. Angel, feel free to drop me a DM. I do have to jump off here and run to something else. But for those of you that have product-based businesses, I just want you to take as homework to go and think about those questions in terms of bringing on a service-based business. And again, I'm so often doing this on the fly and not necessarily writing it down. So again, the questions that you want to think about are, if I have a product-based business, what problem is it solving? So start there. And when you think about the problem that it's solving, what other problems does my target client encounter on the way to buying my product? Or what problems does my target client encounter once they have my product? Or what problems does my target client encounter after they've got a hold of my product? Okay, those are the things that you can think about when you start thinking about what service could you offer to really amp up and accelerate your exit for the product-based business. All right, have a great one, ladies, and I'll talk to you again soon.